there's a guy named Stephen Wolfram. Mm -hmm. There's a concept called cellular automata. So there's a, there's some mysteries in these um, systems that are computational in nature that have maybe echoes of the kind of mysteries we should need to solve to understand what is life. Mm -hmm. So if we could talk, take a computational view of things, do you think there's something compelling to reducing everything down to computation, like the universe is computation, and then trying to understand life. So throw away the biology, throw away the chemistry, throw away even the physics that you, you learn in undergrad and graduate school, and more look at these simple little systems, whether it's cellular automata or whatever the heck kind of computational systems that operate on simple local rules and then create complexity uh, as they evolve. Is, is it uh, at all, do you think, productive to focus on those kinds of systems to get an inkling of what is life? And if it is, do you, do you think it's, it's possible to come up with some kind of laws and principles about what makes life in those computational systems? So I like cellular automata. I think they're good toy models, um, but mostly like where I've thought about them and used them is to actually, um, let's say, poke at sort of the current conceptual framework that we have and see where the flaws are. Um, so I think like the part that you're talking about that people find intriguing is that if you have like a fairly simple rule and you specify some initial condition and you run that rule on that initial condition, you could get really complex patterns emerging. Yeah. And ooh, doesn't that look lifelike? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's like really surprising, isn't it? Really it surprising? is really surprising and they're beautiful. Um, and I, I think they have a lot of nice features associated to them. Um, I think the things that I find... Yeah, so so I I do think um, as a proof of principle that you can get complex things emerging from simple rules. They're great. Um, as a sort of proof of principle about some of the ways that we might think of computation as being sort of a fundamental principle for dynamical systems and maybe the, the evolution of the universe as a whole, they're a great model system. As an explanatory framework for life, I think um, they're a bit problematic for the same reason that the laws of physics are a bit problematic. Um, and the clearest way I can articulate that is like cellular automata are actually cast in sort of a conceptual framework for how the universe should be described that goes all the way back to Newton, in fact, with this idea that we can have a fixed law of motion, which exists sort of it's given to you. Um, you know, the great programmer in the sky gave you this equation or this rule, and then you just run with it. Um, and the rule doesn't have, so a good feature of the rule is it doesn't have specified in the rule information about the patterns it generates. So you wouldn't want, for example, the my cup or my water bottle or, you know, me sitting here to be specified in the laws of physics. That would be ridiculous because it wouldn't be a very simple explanation of all the things happening. It'd have to explain everything. So, and cellular automata have that feature um, and the laws of physics have that feature. Um, but, but, you know, you also need to specify the initial condition. Um, and it also, it basically means that everything that happens is sort of a consequence of that initial condition. And I think this kind of framework is just not the right one for biology. Um, and part of the way that it's easiest to see this is um, a lot of people talk about self-reference being important in life. The fact that, um, you know, like the genome has information encoded in it, that information gets read out. Um, it specifies something about the architecture of a cell. Um, the architecture of the cell includes the genome. So the genome has basically self-referential information. Self-reference obviously comes up in um, computation a lot because it's kind of foundational um, to Turing's work and what Gödel did with the incompleteness theorems and things. So there's a lot of um, parallels there, and, and people have talked about that at depth. 